Today I want to talk about bride and groom prep. This moment of the day is our moment as videographers, cinematographers, to get really creative and give our couples really nice content. Over this little course, I'm going to tell you how I think when it comes to bride and groom prep. I'm going to tell you different examples of how you might encounter a little bit of resistance and how to counter those because we don't want to ever be in that situation. And then I'm going to actually go in the computer for a little over an hour and show you guys tons and tons of bride prep from actual weddings and talk about the lenses that I'm using, the cameras that I'm using at the time, because a lot of these weddings are five and six years old, but the image quality still holds up because it's all about the lighting and the lens choice for these moments. So with all that being said, when I walk into bride prep, the first thing I do is I say hello to our lovely bride, and then I location scout for the best light at the venue. Now, there's a couple different variables at play here. If the bride is getting ready at the venue, most of the time she's gonna be in a bridal suite. Bridal suites are never photo video friendly. They can have a weird type of wall, you can be dealing with mixed light, all fluorescent lights. These are things you don't want to be dealing with. So you have to find a location for the bride to do her makeup and put on her dress. Once I find that light, it can be in a completely different room. If it's at a hotel, it can be on a whole different floor. Once I find that spot for the light, that's all that I'm concerned about. I find a bridesmaid and I tell the bridesmaid, hey, can I borrow you for like five minutes? And I bring them to that designated area that I really think could potentially photo and do film very well there. Once she's there, I sit her down and I just say, look, all I need you to do is just look out the window for me. And then I'm actually going to record this moment and I'm gonna tell you why. The one thing I'm looking for for bride prep makeup is the catch lights in her eyes. I'm gonna go over this in the computer here in a little bit. This is, once you understand what the catch lights are, you're, you're gonna know right away if you're in really good light. And then I'm also paying attention to what the background kind of looks behind her because I don't want a bunch of stuff, people walking around, mimosas. I don't want any of that stuff that's usually at, at bride prep. Now, you want to befriend this bridesmaid because she's basically now going to be part of your tribe. She's going to be your messenger. I have found out through the years, if I go and take the wedding dress, I'm going to be met with resistance from potentially the mom, an aunt, another bridesmaid. And I don't have time to be told, you can't, you can't move the dress. You, oh, we don't want the dress there. I need to get what I need to get and I need to get it quick. So if you befriend this bridesmaid, Kelly, you say, hey, Kelly, can you go grab me the dress? Kelly's going to get you that dress and no one's going to give Kelly any lip because she's part of the wedding party. So you always want to try to immediately befriend one of the bridesmaids. Now, bonus tip, if she's engaged, most likely she's going to hire you for her wedding because now you guys already have sort of, you guys are basically buddies now. But anyways, once I find, once I have that spot, and once I have the bridesmaid in that light and I've got video of her, I'm then going to go down to wherever the bride is and I'm going to introduce myself to the makeup artist. Now, I know several makeup artists, but if I'm in a completely different market, I always introduce myself. I say, hi, I'm Brett. I'm making the film today. For the last couple of minutes of makeup, are you okay with physically moving the bride to this location? Because she's in, gonna be in really flattering light. And most of the time, the makeup artist is gonna be absolutely cool about it. Now, every now and then you're gonna encounter a makeup artist that will not move the bride for whatever reason it may be. And I just cannot sacrifice quality if the bride is on the toilet, if she's on the tub, to get the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink, a bed slouched over, I need my light. 
So the reason I record the bridesmaid is because years ago, when I, the first six or seven years of me making weddings, I could never get a makeup artist to move. And it absolutely killed my passion, my drive. It was just, just the worst thing you could imagine because we need that content. And I'll never forget when I started recording the bridesmaid in that really nice light and the makeup artist would say, no, I'm not moving. I then would just flip the camera around and I would show the bride, hey, this is what you're going to look like. And then this is what you look like now. And I, so many of my brides have point blank told the bridesmaid, I want to be moved. I don't want to be here. And you might ruffle some feathers. That's okay. But we want our couples to always look the best. And just to clarify, this has not happened to me in years. I don't know what changed. I'm very grateful that I don't really have to deal with that anymore. Every now and then you will get a makeup artist who might be newer or doesn't really understand what we're trying to do and they're gonna give you a little bit of resistance. But the way you counter that is you actually show video of a bridesmaid in that light. Once all that's straightened out and ready and good to go, I then ask the bride for details, invites, jewelry, shoes, veil. I've already got some dress stuff and I spent a little bit of time filming that. I just usually like to set it up, maybe put a little fill light, use my slider with my Zeiss 2O macro and just get a couple of slides with that, very easy, not really stressful at all. Now, depending on the location or the timeline, this usually what happens, the photographers will arrive once I'm doing detail stuff like that. I get everything done and then I let the photographers do what they need to do for their product, their brand. You don't ever want to interfere with portraits or details with photographers. It's what they do. Let them do their job. Moving right along. Now again, all weddings are different. Drive times are different, but just for the sake of this video, once we get the detail shots, the bride is usually still doing her hair or real makeup is beginning. And, and then the photographer and I will go to the groom's room and we'll knock out the groom prep. Now, here's a scenario that you don't wanna be in, but it is a great way to counter it. Most wedding photographers are gonna shoot completely different from my style. Just to clarify, I shoot very dark and sexy. I think it looks the best. Most wedding photographers, I call it bright and scary, where everything is just crazy bright, overexposed, and that's okay. And when we're filming groom prep, if I know that they're gonna shoot bright and scary, I tell them, hey, you get what you gotta get. I'm not even gonna be in the room. And then when you're done, I'm going to come in and I'm going to make the room look really dark and sexy. And then I'm going to get what I need to get. And they're like, oh my gosh, Brett, this is genius. We can't tell you how many videographers we have shot with that there's three or four of them. And they're in there with these big tripods and these cameras and their lenses. And there's four people running around. We don't, we can't get any material. And I'm like, I'm not that guy. I get it. And it's a very respectful thing because if a wedding photographer shoots bright and scary and they're gonna to attempt to shoot dark and sexy, it's not gonna be their brand. And I don't want that wedding photographer to have to sacrifice their brand or their quality for me. And it's vice versa. And now if I'm shooting with a photographer that shoots really dark and sexy like I do, <laughs> sometimes we're butting heads because we're wanting to get the exact same shot. We had the same eye for that quality content. So I don't mind shooting with a photographer that shoots bright and scary because I'm, I'm able to get what I need to get and they're not even in the room. Because with groom prep, I only need to be there for three or four minutes. There's only a couple of really just shots you have to get for uh, groom prep. Same situation with bride prep. I can't tell you how many photographers absolutely love the fact that I'm not even in the room when they're doing what they need to do. Now, if that's the case, I tell them, you go ahead and get what you need to get. I don't care who goes first. 
doesn't matter to me. All that matters is that I am able to stay true to my brand. Funny story, about four or five years ago, we were at this wedding venue and they had a bridal suite in the basement, off the rescent white walls and lockers and showers. The photographer, for some reason, loved that look. I thought he was joking, but he wasn't okay with that. I tell the bride, hey, I'm gonna take you and your mom. I'm gonna find a spot with some really sexy light and we're going to get some really nice, rich material for you. You know, that's Brett. He's just, okay, yeah, we'll do it for sure, buddy. It was great. So I told the photographer, hey man, I'm not even gonna be in here. And it was him and three, two other photographers and an assistant, so four people total. He gets all, he, and he gets everything he needs to get, everything's good. I find this gorgeous conference room, cherrywood walls, giant window that actually had the like uh, curtains you could just like pull so I could completely manipulate the, manipulate the light. And I was thinking, okay, put the bride here, the mom here, put a little backlight. Oh my God, this would be so freaking nice. The only problem was the table, there's this giant table with like 40 chairs. Luckily the table had wheels, so I was, I was able to move that no problem. Mom comes up, bride comes up, got them positioned, good to go. Wedding photographer comes up with his three people and he's like, oh my gosh, this room's gorgeous. Turns on all the, all the fluorescence. And I'm like, this is not, he's not gonna hijack this scene. There's just, I, there's just no way. And I told him, I said, hey, look, I can't have you in here. I let you have the basement locker room. I need this. He was cool with it. Long story short, he ended up bringing the whole bridal party back up. And the first look was pushed behind because he wanted to redo the redo of bridal prep. And it's just one of those weddings I feel like we all have throughout the years. We have that one that's just kind of out there. And anyways, just I just wanted to throw that out there that that if you do encounter that, just kind of sit back and enjoy it because there's not really anything you can do. And with the bridal prep, I'm able to get what I need to get. The bride, um, the photographer is able to get what they need to get and same with the groom. So if you do shoot different styles, just remember that you can always just tell the photographer, get what you need to get and then I'm gonna get what I need to get. That way you're true to your brand your couples are hiring you for your personality and your work, and you wanna have work on your website that they see to really match the work that you're giving them. So do not ever just walk into bride prep, and if you just see that they're in the room, a bridal suite, do not feel like you have to stay there and be in that bridal suite, because you don't. Always look for the best light because bride prep is the time of the day that we are able to sort of have a little bit of control. Early on in my career, I never really, I remember thinking like, this just looks awful. And I never really spoke up and got things to look that they, that they should look. And the more you do this, you get more comfortable with it. Your work starts to look better. Brides respect you more. Photographers, planners respect you more because you're going the extra mile to make your content look a lot better. And now I'm gonna go in the computer and show you guys pretty much everything that I just said right there live. So we're gonna dive into that right now. Okay, this is the portion where I'm going to walk through a lot of different weddings throughout the years. A lot of these clips are gonna be very random, very sporadic but I'm going to walk you through the cameras that I'm using, how I set things up, and again, talk about ways to counter any type of resistance that you actually are going to most likely encounter on the wedding day. So typical bride prep is gonna look like this. Obviously, this is not where we want to be, what we want to do, because you've got let me take this. I always put a 16 by 9 filter on the frame because immediately it gives it more of a cinematic feel. And that's what I want. But I'm going to take it off just for the shot. Notice these fluorescent light or these tungsten lights up here. These are not your friend. 
any time you can avoid these, you need to at all cost because these are going to make our girls look very orange, mustardy, and we do not want that. On top of that, right away, I would when I walked in here, I knew I noticed there the tungsten lights and the beige walls. Now, beige walls are my favorite wall color to shoot in, and I'll talk about that why here in a little bit. So we've got our tungsten, we've got our natural light. What this is gonna do to our bride is it's going to throw a lot of different color and shade on her face, which is right here. Now this is all just raw, unfiltered, unedited, ungraded. And this is not the situation that I want this to be. So as I said in the intro to this course, the way I handled this was I found a room I loved and of course I found a bridesmaid or someone in the wedding party where I could bring in and have them model that light that I really want. This would be a very soft, even light, which is very ideal for situations. And once I had our model, I noticed right away her eyes there was a lot of catch light in her eyes. I thought, okay, this is perfect. The light is very even, it's very clean. There's not oranges or greens. The skin looks like skin, and this is a very usable image. So I, of course, talked to the makeup artist, absolute sweetheart, was more than happy to move our bride. We brought the makeup chair, and I always, for these shots, I always tell the makeup artist I need a blush brush, something to do with lips, and something to do with an eyebrow, eyebrow pencil, whatever that stuff's called. Those are the, th the three things that I'm wanting to showcase in the overall film. And this was all shot with a Canon 1DC. Canon 1DC is a very easy camera to grade. I'll just do that now. If I were to be re-editing this film, this is how I would grade it with the Canon 1DC. All I do is I use the image editor inside my Avid Media Composer. I know no, I don't know any videographers using Audi, Avid Media Composer. I've, I'm the outcast when it comes to editing. I'm the outcast to color grading. I'm the outcast of shooting weddings. I take that title proudly because I always want to be completely different. And if I were to color grade this, all that I would be doing is I would add probably 15 contrast and then maybe 20 saturation. And I would be absolutely in love and okay with this image. And then I'll put the 16 by nine back on there to give it more of that movie look. And this is a very usable image. Very clean, crisp. If you notice there is the back of her hair is lit up. That's because I have a torch light behind her and I did this because I wanted to separate her hair even more from the background. Because if you're trying to get a real cinema look, you want to add different elements and depth to your image. So we're focused on her eyes, we've got the rim light on our bride, and we have some foreground with our makeup artist. So we're, we got three elements here to really make up this image, and it, it just it comes to life. Now, same exact room. This is the room we were just in for makeup. I don't know if it was this wedding, but this venue has the bridal suite. And one wedding, the photographer wanted to do the putting the bride, the dress in here. I don't think it was Chelsea's wedding, though. But just to give you an idea, this would be the room that some photographers would want to shoot with, and they would... Most likely, if they're wanting to be in this room, they're going to want the tungsten light on there as well. And we don't want that. We want very clean, pretty. Like I said in our intro, we want our bride to look sexy, and we want to be her favorite vendor. And this room right here is gorgeous for putting on the dress, for preps, letter reading. You can do anything in this room because you've got the beige walls, which is very ideal. And you have, there's some windows over here you can't see and you got natural light pouring in. Why I really like beige walls opposed to white walls, because if these were all white, it would take away from the bride. Since the walls are that sort of that beigeous look, it's gonna complement the skin, and you're gonna be able to backlight the hair 
a lot easier and it's this is going to, to pop more than it would with a all white room an all white room is just going to give a very washed out boring look and we do not want our couples to have that with cinema this mirror here i found from the other room and i always you'll notice in a lot of my clips and i'm going to talk about finding props shooting through posters reflections candles I once shot through a microwave and it was absolutely beautiful. You need to learn how to use reflections to your advantage. And right here, this is just through the mirror on a 50, my 51 four Zeiss. And there you can see the actual mirror there. And what I love about these shots is they're different. Not most videographers are going to put this much effort and heart into creating some really good content. Most people would think, oh, okay, this is the bride room, let's set up camp here, and then they're not able to get this rich look that we want where it looks like this is straight out of a movie or a magazine. Again, just another shot. I always give a little direction to, I tell them, I always tell them I want their eyes to be facing towards the sunlight, and that's because since the sunlight's going to be hitting mostly this direction, you're going to see some roll off with the shadow on her face. And then every now and then I'll say, you know, look, look into my camera. And this is that short side lighting that we absolutely crave more shooting weddings. And again, this isn't even graded. If I were to grade that image, I'll just, I think this was the effect. Yeah. Or the clip. And now that is, that would be graded. What I might do is you see how we're losing a little bit of detail on the left of her face. I'll probably cut the contrast in half to let's just say seven and then that's going to bring it back. Very usable, very clean, elegant, classy, no mixed light, nothing, nothing distracting. Now remember how I said I love to use reflections and stuff like that? Well this couple they didn't do a first look they just kind of held hands and I was able to just simply use my monopod and just kind of reveal the couple. Very, very clean, very slow. And if we didn't, if I didn't have that mirror there, I wouldn't really have, I would have just had a, a wide shot kind of static and we don't, anytime we can be creative or get a little bit more juice, we need to do it. On to the next wedding, this was another bride prep situation. And remember guys, this is how bride prep always is. There's a lot of stuff going on. You've got, I don't know if we can see it. Okay, we've got some, it looks like fluorescent light possibly, coming right down on where our bride would be for makeup. And then we have natural light. It looks like over here we got a little bit of lamp light. So we've got three different sources of light hitting our bride. And all three sources are not going to mix well together. And so this wedding I found a, a, a bar in the lobby. And I actually filmed her wedding. So remember I always talk about you need to find somebody in the bridal party to model right away. Well Carly already knew right away what I was doing and she was totally down to going down to this little bar and there was a, a female in here working and I all that I really said was I'm, I'm trying to make a, a really beautiful wedding and the lighting here is going to be absolutely perfect would you care if we brought the bride down here and did makeup and she was absolutely cool about it no headache so shout out to that girl whoever that may be and as you can tell right away I've got some really clean light. I've got a very dark background. I love when my canvas I'm shooting into is dark because this is going to put all eyes on our lovely bride. And we've got our model set up. We've got catch lights in the eyes. We've got perfect composition. We are good to go. Now, this is already graded for some reason. So now we got our bride. We got our, we got our bride tailor in this spot. I've also got a little bit of lines leading right to our bride on that right one third. So absolutely perfect symmetry here. 
And this was shot with an S on Sony A7S S Log 2. Now right away, the composition is, is going to be perfect, but because I have my black bars on top, some of her forehead is cut off. So that's what it probably that's what it looked like through my viewfinder. But I put the black bars on here because I don't nail composition every single time. And I have these black bars here. They kind of basically they act as safety nets. And what I mean by that is since this is the black's going to be chopped off on the overall film, I can throw in a blow up effect and I can move people up and down by 2. So I'll I'll put Taylor down by 1. And that is some really good composition. Remember, if this was a tic-tac-toe board, you want her eyes to be on that right one-third. And it's on the right because that's where her face is. And she's looking towards the left. Now, if she was looking the other way, I would have put her, her face here. And then her eyes would have been leading this way, giving her a left one-third composition. Most videographers out there have lost this train of thought and it absolutely ruins their overall films and I want you guys to always pay attention when you're doing any sort of filming pay attention to your composition this is very pleasing to the eye she doesn't have a lot of back room and there's a lot of lead room on our broad and that's what we want now when I grade S log 2 there's not really a right way or a wrong way to color grade things so whatever really works for you, go ahead and stick with that. I use a program called Magic Bullet Looks. That is not what we want. What I do is the first thing, I go to my curves. And I want to drop my shadows. So this is going to make all this sort of that washed out. This is going to bring all of this down and really make our bride come to life, which is what we want. Now you don't want to go too far because you're going to lose a lot of your details in your darks and we want to retain those. So right about right about here I'm okay with. Now I'm going to raise my highlights. And now this right away is looks a lot better. And since this was log, it's a very flat profile, which means I'm going to have to add a lot of this data back in. But it gives you the freedom and flexibility to change things around where it's not necessarily baked into your video clips. And then I'm going to throw a 150% saturation on here. And I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Very, very clean. You got some of that, quote, bokeh although I call it just blurry stuff in the background. And we are good to go. Just some more, more shots from Taylor. I always like to show the makeup artist to kind of tie in who's actually applying the makeup. Just another shot of the eye. If you can tell, let me throw that same effect on there. The catch lights in her eyes are perfect. You see, you actually can see in the pupil the, the window light that is the main, our main source. And then this here is just a wide, a little bit more of a wide shot showing you guys that this is just a bar. This is, you can see the chairs in the back. And I don't know many people that would have saw this and thought, you know what, I'm going to, I think a broad would look really nice in that bar area. And I'll throw a, the same color grade on the bar clip. And as you can tell, it's just, it's a completely different image. And I'll remove the effect to show you And this was, again, Sony S-Log2, a very old camera. And this wedding was a couple years ago. And it still holds up amazing because of our light source. Same bride, Taylor. I like to just bring them over to a window. 
and it's just some nice footage to have. I'll probably, I would probably warm this up a little bit and I'll show you how I do that. You can either use the Colorista tab and just give your midtones a little bit of an orangish look or you can throw on a warm cool filter and then slide warmth. Whatever you want to do. There's no again, there's really no right or wrong way to color grade stuff. It's whatever you're comfortable with and the image you kind of have in your head. This same exact spot for the bar we used for her putting on her dress. I always love to rack focus from whoever's behind the bride back to the bride. If you can get the bride laughing or smiling while you are turning that lens, you can get a lot you can get a lot of bang for your buck. And just some more of that that just that natural light. Now, what if you're dealing with a bride that doesn't have a makeup artist? She's doing the makeup all of herself. You need to learn how to really get some content that's good. Now, if you notice here, she's got, she's got a torch light lighting her up. I have the torch light set to match the color temperature of this light that I brought. I'm just using a little string light and I'm dangling it over my camera. And I'm on a one, I'm on a 100 Zeiss here on a Canon 1DC. And Brittany here, she didn't even know I was filming. I have the monopod kind of lodged between some sort of a shelf that had a bunch of different pillars. And I went back there and thought, if I can get a lens to shoot her, I'm just going to walk away. And so I have like 18 minutes of this just static shot that I could just pick anything that I wanted. Now to show you guys the grade on the 1DC. Again, I'll just go 15 contrast, maybe. No, because I've lost a little bit of detail in her hair. I'll dump it down to 10. A little of its back. And then saturation, I will just say 25. That looks great. I would be more than happy with that image right there. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to give her a little bit of dialogue here. and Hopefully the microphone picks this up. But you always want to tell your, your brides what it is you need them to do. And so this is what we went with for this shot. Yeah. And now come into the mirror and then put something on. And right there was a very clean, interesting shot. And then another part was her doing the same shot with make with lipstick because I wanted to have a, a couple different looks I could choose from whether it be blush eyeliner lipstick go ahead and back up and now go in and now put it on good to go we've got our bride on the right and then the composition is still money with her eyes on that left one third I would probably bring this down because I'm all about proper composed shots. And I'll bring it down a little bit. And that works. Now, I'm going to go from another angle on the other side of the mirror and then reveal Brittany putting on her lipstick. Very close up, very clean. And this was actually with the 24 to 105 at f4. And since I'm all the way in at 105, I'm still getting a really blurry background depth of field. I mean, from her lips to her hair is probably, what, four or five inches? But look at the throw from the focus to the, the blurriness of her hair. This is exactly what we want. And I was on the 24 to 105 because I wanted to have the image stabilization which that lens has. And then we'll just throw a color effect on here and this I would imagine her lips are really gonna <laughs> be popping here and then we'll go 25 saturation
Now, what if you're dealt a situation where you are in a very, very tiny room that's a million degrees? This is how you handle that. This was, I had, there was not one shot I could do in here. And I usually feel like I can get one or two nice shots, but this was just, I couldn't, this was just awful. And this is how I got away with getting the bride in really flattering light. Are you opposed to moving by chance? Right downstairs, there's that big sliding glass window. Are you cool with that? Okay, awesome. What all do you need help carrying? And that is how you can counter those situations. Because I couldn't, I just couldn't be up there. I'm not one to ever complain about being hot. I live in the sauna. I think I might have had a cold that day. My voice sounded a little bit raspy. And I just remember thinking, like, I, I can, I have to get out of this room. I just can't do it. And thank God this makeup artist was totally cool about moving. And then once we got our bride down to the room, I was able just to get a couple of just simple rack focuses that add a little bit of value and creativity. And you always want to keep the viewer interested. And this was shot... Sony S-Log2. So this next clip is the same wedding. And this is where the bride was getting her dress on. It was in a off-fluorescent room with one window light. And the photographer and I actually kind of butted heads because she wanted all the fluorescence on. And I just said, look, I absolutely not. And... I turned off all the lights and then she took some test shots of me and she said, okay, it'll work. I didn't, I didn't think that that light would be able to reach that much. The room, the, the rule about great lighting, the darker the room is, the less light you need. So if this room was pitch black, a couple of little candles would really make anything look great because there's, it's so dark, you don't need a whole lot of light to brighten that room up. And as you can tell, I've got some banding here, I think that's what they call it, where the fluorescent lights will mess up your video. You're going to get these little rolling shutter things. And you can counter that by adjusting your shutter speed. Well, obviously, I tried, and I couldn't get those lines off. And again, blows my mind that some photographers are okay with these situations. So once we got the light off, now you've got really soft, even light. Look how just nice the light hits her hair, it hits her skin. It's not blown out. You can still see all the detail. And I'll throw, I'll just color grade this really quick so you guys can see. Because I already know when I go into rooms, and this is what I want you guys to know too, exactly what this is going to look like when you throw a simple grade on it. Go to my curves. Drop my shadows, probably bring up my highlights a tad, form sort of an S-curve, and then I'm going to throw a lot of saturation on there. We'll say 150. Extremely clean. And I have so many shots of this bride in this area. Because throughout the years, I always knew one day a time would come when I would need to show before and after. And so I always, every wedding, I'll take my phone out or I'll record something beforehand just to have, give you guys an idea. Now, can you imagine a bride putting on her dress and she's yellow and orange and there's streaks going through the, the, the camera? Some photographers, if you, if you tell them that you get those and they're not understanding or believing... Just tell them to put their camera, if they're using a DSLR, to put it on, I think it's called live live mode or live view, and they can actually see on their viewfinder what they get. I've come across that years ago, and I was able to get fluorescence turned off. I don't know why photographers, some want fluorescence on. It makes absolutely no sense to me. And then this right here is just really, really gorgeous light. And this bride here is in front of another bar at the venue. And there's just a, I think it was like maybe a 10-inch little like hole in the, 
the wall and there was like there was just a little screen over it and it was an ample amount of light and it's just hitting her perfectly sony a7s2 50 prime compositions on point bright bright on the right one third looking left with all of that lead room we'll throw the same s log 2 grade on her and now she is just brought to life all the bling all of the bling and this is all being enhanced by the contrast in the background and then the natural light just pouring on our bride just another creative type shot of makeup just shooting through a mirror really slow with my monopod i think i might actually be seen nope guess not always utilize your mirrors or any kind of reflection now this right here this was the conference room where makeup was happening obviously everything is just orange and i i will not film anything in orange tungsten light so what we did i befriended the girl at the desk at the lobby and i told her the kitchen area where people have their breakfast in the morning at the hotel is absolutely beautiful with light would you care if i brought the bride here and she said at me whatever you need to do and now this is our bride so we would go from nasty orange to natural, pretty, glam, whatever you want to call it. I've got a torchlight behind her as well because I want her to kind of pop from the background even more. And so you can create that with adding a little bit of backlight. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the catch lights in her eyes. And then I think I got the same shot again, a little bit wider back. Yeah, I mean, perfect. There is some orange spill in the back, but I'm okay with it because it's not really affecting our bride. And this was with the 1DC on a 50. And you already know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to crush the blacks by 10. Not by 41. And then I'm going to add, we'll say, 20 saturation. Boom. Good to go. So we went from this just crazy. So you never want to be in a mixed light situation. You always want to use natural light. Now you might ask, well, Brett, you're backlighting. I am, but I'm putting the backlight to 5600, which matches the color temperature of the sun. So although this is artificial light, it's still matching the sunlight. So you can get away with it. Same exact bride, same exact setup, just complete, looks like a completely different room. All that I did was I turned her around and I said, go ahead and write your letter. And I've got a torchlight lighting her because if I didn't have that torch light, she would be pretty underexposed. And then this, the, these lights back here, these windows would be even brighter. And so I always expose her background first, and then I bring my couple in. And so what I mean by that is I remember setting the camera thinking, I don't want these windows to be so, so bright. And I made it so there's still, there's some, you can still see some detail back here. And then so when we brought the bride into this area to write her letter, I had to now add light to her to compensate for darkening that background. Hopefully that makes sense. Composition still, right one third, a lot of lead room on the left. Same angle, now I'm just on the hands. And we're good to go. And it, you see this little shadow here? This is what we want. And this is caused because I have a torch light to the left. And I'll throw a grade on. And then there you go. That is a 
very nice, clean image. And okay, you see how she kind of smirks here? <laughs> I gotta say, I, I believe I, I always try to just tell them to maybe, I don't know, I, I want to find, I always want to have a little bit of emotion when they are writing their letter. And then just give us kind of a little grin, a little smile. All right, and that's perfect. Because I wanted her to smile like that because I don't know what she's writing. She might have said something kind of goofy or silly. And I wanted to flash back showing her writing this. And then so whatever she may have said, then show her kind of giggling as you hear it on camera. And I always want to get some reaction when they're writing their letter. This right here, I'm just, I just want to show you guys. I brought this entire wedding party from the basement floor up to their actual suite that they were in. I turned all the lights off and we're only using this window here as our source. And then A7S II, I'll clearly I'm on a macro lens here and I'm just getting the hands doing the dress. And I pop out with the 50, just getting a little bit wider of a shot to kind of show what's going on. And then I'll grade this as well. Hopefully you guys understand when I'm grading S-Log, what, what it is I'm, I'm doing. I'm just manipulating the curves and adding some saturation. Right there, we'll juice that up. And then we'll throw, I'm feeling 140 here. All right, good to go. Moving right along. And when you're getting these kind of shots, you only need about five seconds. And then you can go bounce around and get as many looks and shots as you want. One thing that I love to do for makeup and preps is I'll ask the artist if she has, I don't know what they're called, you guys will probably laugh at me, but they're the little things with the mirrors and it has like the different colors and shades. And so I always like to grab one of those and then just set that up and make sure that you can see our bride and then just get a nice slide with a slider. And I'll throw that same grade on that shot. And as you can see now, Lindsay here is just brought to life. Same bride, just showing you guys that Sometimes the, the makeup artist is going so fast with the, the powder to the face that I can't keep up. And you can keep doing the same shot over and over and over. And sometimes you'll never get the timing right. So if you can't, you can either, you can either tell the makeup artist, hey, can you slow down a little bit? You're going way too quick for me. Or you can just move, move along and get what you need to get. I, I don't think I ever actually got what I was, what I was trying to accomplish. I'm, I'm about two seconds behind. So I, I, just, I, I, I had to move on. And just to give you an example of what that looks like brought to life, this is what we are now looking with. Catch lights in her eyes, really blown out background, S-Log 2. What I like to do is I like to just have the bride alone with her dress and I just tell her to pick it up, spin it around, kind of look at it, touch it, and just get her alone just with the dress. You can sprinkle this really around anywhere on the edit. I think it looks best when the officiant is talking about this day for the couple or today's the day and you can flash back and you show little shots like this. And then again, just a, just a different angle, same thing. Always give direction to your couples. Can you twirl it around like you were doing? And I, so I always like to get a couple of those shots if I can. If the groom's reading his letter, I always want to show his eyes the entire time that he's reading it in his head. 
And then I've got a, I believe a torch light. I, I don't think it was a Dito light, but a torch light back here because I want to add a little bit of interest with some light back here. And the reason you, you always want to be on the face during the letter is because he might, he might be breaking down or crying or laughing, and you don't want to be focused in on the hands. And I'm, I'll talk about that in a little bit with a bride that did her letter. And so I'm, I'll throw a grade on this shot as well. And then I want you guys really just to pay attention to the, that light off to his, the right of his shoulder. Same thing, same bride. Just get her looking out the window, talk to her, get her to laugh, smile. Always just, again, always give him direction. And this here is uh, another bride. And I'm going to grade this. This is this was with, again, S-Log 2. I would imagine probably my 50 really, really close up on her. And this is what I told her to get her just to genuinely laugh and smile and just be herself. Is this like the most awkward thing in the world? I love it. I don't know if you guys were able to hear that. Let me just turn the, well, it's maxed. I just told her it was very awkward and I loved it. Is this like the most awkward thing in the world? I love it. And you could throw this anywhere on the wedding day. Maybe during the, the groom's personal vows, he loved her laugh, he loved her smile, anything like that. Now you have footage to supplement that. And you're only getting that by just straight up telling them like, hey, this is kind of awkward, isn't it? And they're just naturally going to be giggly. And when you put that in with the right soundtrack, the right coloring, which I'm going to color this because it's a mess right now, you are way ahead of the game. So it looks like maybe my white balance may have been off on this. I'll see if I can clean this up pretty quickly. So it looks like I'm going to have to mess with Colorista. Maybe give my mid-tones a little bit of a bluish to get her skin to be a little bit more evenly. Evenly, even. Okay, and then maybe throw on a warm filter. I would be okay with this. Yeah, I would be, I would be more than happy with this right here. And pay attention to the composition. Her face is more towards the left, so her eyes, looking to the right, are going to have more lead room. And then we've got a window giving her that backlight, naturally. And then here I just told her, hey, why don't you go in the mirror and just, you know, GQ it up for us. And they usually just go in the mirror and they laugh because it's just funny dialogue to tell somebody especially a bride on her wedding day. So you always just want to keep them bubbly, happy, and just be themselves. And then here is same bride just getting the dress on. And right here I actually messed up because I wanted to rack focus from her eyes down to her dress, and I missed it the first time. I focused backwards. So our dress got more blurry. And I remember thinking, oh gosh, I, I need to nail this right now. And now our dress is good. Some lenses focus backwards and some focus forwards. It's just whatever lens you're using. And this is a very, a very usable shot going from eyelashes to smile to dress. A three for three right there. I'll take that any day of the week. And let's not mention the extreme depth of field and the composition where her eyes are going. I mean, this is a 100% home run on all accounts. And then with her sister, they're just interacting naturally. 
And so I'm thinking, okay, I know the sister, I know Andrea is going to give a speech. Now, if she says something about she loves her sister, her sister's beautiful, her sister's her best friend, I now know I already have ammo to throw on top of that with this right here. And I didn't tell them to do anything like that. It's best sometimes if they're sort of in the element just to shut up and let things just happen. And this here, this was at a museum, and this museum had a bridal suite, and the bridal suite was absolutely terrifying. And I found a mirror, and I remember thinking, okay, I love this little area here. Let me take the black bars off. There's a good area here, and you got some real light pouring in. If I could find a mirror, I'm good to go. Luckily, I found a mirror quickly. I talked to the guy at the museum and I told him is there any way we can turn all these lights off for about 20 minutes and he said sure whatever you need to do once you utilize a mirror like I said you can just get some nice slides and I got one obviously revealing the dress you put the bride in that light now you can shoot through the mirror you get some of that that unique look shooting through the bevels Focusing on whoever it is, a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, not uncle, friend, sister, it doesn't matter. Always focus on that person, their eyes, because then you're going to focus in on their hands, and then you're going to focus in on the bride. I did a rack focus here from that person down to the bride's arm, and then revealing the sort of that texture in the dress. And this texture is coming from that natural light because this portion of her body is closer to that window and there's going to be a slight roll off in the darker portion and this is what you want to reveal detail or bling in wedding dresses. Now we're just, she's in her dress, she's got a jewelry on, shooting through the mirror and we're good to go. I'll throw an A7S grade on there to give you an idea. So that would definitely need to be cleaned up. I'm noticing that it's a little unsaturated, add a little bit more, and I'm gonna go into the Colorista where I can manually adjust my shadows, my midtones, and my highlights, the color. Well, I'm gonna just give my midtones a little warmth, see what happens. I'm liking that. Now if I want, I could give my midtones a little coolness and then I could throw a warm filter on there. Now the coolness is gonna bring the wedding dress down to more of a natural white, and that's what you want. And then you add your warmth. And that's a very usable image. Now this right here, this is, this is a venue in Cincinnati, Ohio, that is known by everybody to have the most purest form of soft light in the absolute world. No matter where you go in this venue, you're going to have soft light. And it's like you're cheating the system. It is absolutely crazy. Now, this is what I'm talking about with... There's two things I want to go over here. The bride had a letter from her groom. I didn't want Kelly to read this letter until she had her makeup on and she had her hair done. If she wanted her dress on, great. If not, that's okay. But I know this is key, rich content, and I want my bride to look nice because I'm going to use this. We brought a chair from the reception right here, and I said, just sit here and read your letter in your head. Because when I edited this, I recorded Blaine's voice into my microphone. So I just wanted her to read it privately to herself, so then I could add Blaine's voice in afterwards. I see a lot of wedding videos where the bride's reading this letter out loud. You got a photographer clicking, you got people walking in the background, and she says she shows no emotion because there's all these different elements going on. If you can get the bride alone and just say, hey, read this to yourself, you're gonna get a good reaction. And so right here, She's just reading it, and I'm focusing only on her face. Okay, so just hold the letter up so you can look down at it. 
And now I'm going to bounce around and get my creative shots with the letter and her hand because I don't want to be getting these shots while the letter is actually being read because I may miss any emotion that she's going to show with her face. And now I'm just getting my focus assist and I'll probably do a rack focus with her hair because I'm, I hope I do. And I did. So I'm, anytime I can rack focus, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go from point A to point B in a single take because that just adds some interest. Now I want to show you guys how great that A7S II grades and just really soft, pure light. Because there's no, all we're dealing with here is our is a very dark background, which is sexy as can be with that natural light. You never want to deal with mixed light. Tungsten light would have just contaminated, poisoned this image beyond repair. And so we're going to drop our shadows. We're starting to lose a little detail around here, so right here is good. And then we're going to bring up our highlights just a tad. And as you can tell, there's still some bling and detail in her dress. And then we're going to add 150 saturation on Kelly. And now Kelly is absolutely flawless. I mean, I'm telling you, this, this venue lights, I've never seen anything like it. And then what I probably would do is, you see how she kind of looks up a little bit? And the black bars would cut that off. I probably would pull her down to here. And then if you let it play out, now you're not really missing that. And then, yeah, after that, you just give them direction. Hey, hold the letter out. Let me get some shots of the, of the hands, and we're good to go. This is just a another just a clean shot of the sister helping her with the dress. I just want to talk about the composition, where she needs to be, and then the the blurriness, the, the foreground of our bride, and then the sister. And so I'll throw that same color grade. And I mean, how just gorgeous does that look? And this is a Sony camera. Sony is known to having the absolute worst skin tones in the history of cameras. But this light here, it does not matter. It's still freaking flawless it's insane a little bit of groom prep all i'm doing is I'm, I'm i'm telling him just to just directing what i need okay now now just look up and then just start kind of twisting your tie a little bit and now you start to get the shot playing with some foreground with him writing a letter and then same shot silhouette shot of him writing a letter and then a dress with a slider with the sunlight up top. All of this was shot with the Sony A7S II. This room right here, I went through a war with the church lady because this was a Sunday school room and this this Church had a designated bridal suite, of course, and we all know that bridal suites are normally the ugliest rooms possible when it comes to filming, and I would not accept filming in there. And so, long story short, I got my way. I'm always going to win for my couples, no matter what. And this room, the lighting here also, was gorgeous. And it's because mainly the walls and things are all dark. The darker the walls, the more your brides are going to come to life. And this room was just gorgeous. And it's a Sunday school room. I mean, you can see the old school chairs, the old lunch tables, but all that doesn't matter because we are just looking for the best light. And I'll throw a grade on here.
And so when I walked past this room, I specifically had this image in my head. I knew that that window light behind her would give me this look. And then you shoot from the other side and you're good to go. And then right here is another example of me of getting our bride to laugh. We were talking about candy bars and this is what was said. Real initial giggle because I'm talking about, you know, yeah, we can be friends if you like frozen Snickers and they just laugh and it's real. And we'll grade that image. I mean, absolutely, it's, that is phenomenal, opposed to where we would be at in a bright, all-white room with mixed lighting. Right here is a great example of finding a bridesmaid. And I, this is Kelsey. I filmed Kelsey's wedding out in California. And so she already knew. She already knew what I needed. And so she actually helped me. This was a spare room in the house. And we found this mirror in another room. We brought the mirror in there. We moved the bed. We moved the couch. We moved some boxes and things like that. I think they were... They were remodeling or moving, but this room was very nice for makeup. And so Kelsey modeled for me here, and then the next shot is going to be our, our bride. This was on the Canon 1DC. Just some more of that window light. So this venue here actually had a bridal suite, which was maybe a 12 by 12 room, all white walls and a little bit of tungsten light. And I did not want to sacrifice knowing what this room in here would, would look like. I, I had to have my bride in here. So this room was a little bit of a walk and there was no air in here. So it was a, it was a little bit stuffy, not bad, but I mean, it's absolutely flawless. And so I'll just, this is, this is with the 1DC. So we'll just add 10 and then we'll just slide this up till we think it starts to look good. Ah, about 26. Now what I love about these kind of shots where I just tell them to look down and then look under my camera because if there's a letter involved or their personal vows and let's say the groom says, you know, hey Kristen, I can't wait to see you at the altar. You could close that with, I can't wait to see you, I love you. And then boom, she looks right into the camera. It just adds, there's something about timing those shots up to these moments. And so that's why I like to really play around with, okay, look outside, look into my camera, because I'm going to possibly be able to come back and re-edit that stuff. And this lighting, I mean, everything about this, this is just ideal. This is what I want every single time. And thank God the venue was like, you really want to do... You want to put her dress on in this room? We had, and I said, yeah, absolutely. It's it's got the greatest light, and it's 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 got sort of that darker wall look and feel, and that's what we won. And so we did the preps that we did the dress in here. Photographers were absolute sweethearts with letting me hijack the entire room and do everything in here. It worked out for everybody, and it was a steal. And so, uh, Kristen again, just she's just reading her letter. And I'm getting her to laugh because I'm, I think I was telling her that the wind was, was just made her look like really hot or something. And she just was like, you know, just giggling because it's just funny. 
And you could throw that anywhere in the edit because they don't know what's being said. The groom and his vows could have been, he could have said something like, I love the way you laugh or I love the way you smile. And then you show this and you cut to her laughing. So you always want to kind of, you use your preps to your advantage and, and sort of stack your film. And then this here was at, at a barn, a very tight barn with one or two windows. And you can see that we weren't able to actually move the bride. And you can actually see bridesmaids like legitimately putting on dresses and things like that. But just only window light with the 1DC. Just playing with the lens, the focal, focal point. I wanted to see if I could get her and the mirror and herself. And so she read her letter here and I used a couple of shots from this angle kind of showing that. And then just rack focusing again, hands to face, hands, face, hands. I, I do that a lot. It just adds, again, a lot to the overall production. More rack focusing, bride dress to bride, back to dress, back to bride, probably back to dress again. And I'm just doing that continuously knowing that one of these has to work. And then same bride, Brittany. Sometimes your brides are going to be really quick with jewelry, putting on earrings. She put that first earring on and I, I didn't even get it. I was like, oh my gosh. And you can hear the interaction right here. Dang, that's quick. <laughs> well, maybe for this one. <laughs> and this one is one of the other earrings, right? Yeah, just perfect. And we're good to go. Now, this is not my ideal situation with a bride and a white wall. And I'm going to show you how to fix that if that's what happens. Well, I'm going to try. I don't know if this necessarily is going to work. But this would be sort of kind of extensive color grading. And I'm going to blow this up because I don't like where she is at on the frame. So I'm going to pull her up to... And now I'm going to go into this color grade. And this might work, this might not work, but we're going to see. So we're going to drop that. We want some of that roll off because over here is our, is our window source. And we'll put that up a little bit. Now this is going to be either be brilliant or the dumbest thing that you'll ever witness in your life. I'm going to crush all of the exposure by one, two. And I'm going to bring up the exposure just on her and sort of around her. So one, 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 two is how far left we went. So one, two is actually plus one, two would be our base. All right, and then we'll add some color. All right, that's not, that's really not that bad. So what I did and my thinking was if I can bring the entire image down my bright white walls are now going to sort of become a grayish. And since I brought everything down by 1.2, I can bring certain spots back up plus 1.2, leaving my exposure as it really was. And so when you do that, your real exposure now is going to be on our bride. And then we're, we manipulated the, the background because we didn't want that original bright white look. And so I'm going to take the gradual exposure and slide it over a little bit. Because if you do that, you see this, you see where it's it's white. It's it's more it's over it's not overexposed, but it's exposed evenly now. That circle, I'm gonna put that really now just on our bride. 
and that is now what we would be working with. And so that was after, and then that's before. Very usable. This is Nate, same wedding. Nate, Brittany, hello. <laughs> Sometimes timelines are bad where there's not a portion for the groom to read his letter. And so we were pressed for time and I said, hey Nate, there's a really good spot with some really nice light pouring in. Just come over here and, and read your letter. And he's reading his letter here to himself and I'm just focused in on his face, not on his hands. I got the hands afterwards. So if there's not time for something and you have, you find a spot and you need something to happen, just do it. This right here was sort of an accident, but I absolutely loved it. I set this mirror up and I started just, I remember playing with my lens. I was, this was, this was a, a, a little bit older of a wedding and I wasn't really doing a whole lot of rack focuses. And I remember thinking, I wonder what it would look like if I could get the bride to be in focus and then the makeup artist in focus. And then I just kept doing it over and over. And I think this was probably the birth of, oh my gosh, this, I absolutely love, I love doing this. And so the composition obviously isn't on point. We would want our bride to be sort of how, see how she's sort of in the center of the frame. We would actually want, want her to be more over here because she's looking off to the right. But this, I still coined this as the birth of when I fell in love with doing rack focuses. <laughs> Just some groom here. I um, I believe I tell him to think of something creepy because I wanted Zach to kind of laugh. And if you want to go ahead and give us some creepy thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> and now you could throw that anywhere of a groom of a groom laughing. Someone might watch this with the right music, the right words, and think, "Oh my gosh, that groom." He's so happy to be marrying his bride. He's literally at the window giggling. And it's because the videographer told him to think of something creepy. Now, you're not going to hear me say that, obviously, on the final edited polished film. But that's how you get those reactions. If you say something just off the wall. Sometimes brides are going to question you. Uh, Jenna here, she didn't understand why I wanted makeup outside so this is the same the same venue where Brittany same same venue Brittany got married at and I didn't want makeup to be in here obviously because I knew what I was going to be dealing with and so Jenna was kind of you know Brett what, what are we doing out here and it'll make sense I promise and obviously, she already knew, because I like to really coach my, my couples Just, yeah, look down with your eyes. My, my fault. to let them know, like, this is what's going to happen. This is why we need to do this. And so sometimes they will, they'll kind of uh, troll you a little bit throughout the day. And I absolutely love it. It's healthy. It's fun. It's just good energy. And it's just funny when they these people hire me, then they start to question me. I absolutely love it. It just makes the day a million times better. And so this is just some a little bit of makeup. Obviously, I didn't want it to be in an all-white room with no really source of light. And when you start to bring things outdoors, it just looks really high-end. And this is her groom. This is a little bit of groom prep. Again, just sliding through the mirror bevel. I think, yeah, there, there I am. And then same, same guy. Just We love the dark walls and we love the natural light pouring in. It always, it always fascinates me. Whenever I'm at a venue that has the bridal suites, most of the time I will put the girls or the bride where the groom's getting ready because the groom suites are always, they just always look so much better on camera. And then right here, Jimmy, we just had, I had a, a, a Dito light very faintly hitting his shoulder here and the photographer was just 
kind of giving him grief and making him laugh. Sexy. Ah! <laughs> and those are just real, just real authentic laughs. We always are interacting with our couples. <laughs> just We just want to have a really good time. And then here's his bride. This is another venue that had an, an, an awful looking bridal suite. And I found this, again, something about the this bar look. I told the photographer and she was like, you know what, I was thinking the same thing. Let's just, let's bring her here because this light is, it's amazing. It's so soft, it's even. This is with a 1DC. I'll just throw, I'll color grade how I would just to kind of show you guys what things look like. Just completely brought to life. I mean, absolutely crazy transformation. Now, one of my focal points that I love is the eyelashes on a bride. And so I usually go from whoever's in the back and then I want my lashes to be focused. Boom. So we're always just looking for a dark canvas and some natural light pouring in. Now this right here, this, uh, this venue here has a bridal suite. Bridal Suite has pink walls and all orange light. I could not and will, would not film the bride in there. Luckily, I know this makeup artist company very well, and she was totally cool with moving her. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have a lot of natural light. This is in downtown Cincinnati. Now, as, as we are doing the, the finishing touches and a little bit of staging the makeup, the staff is actually setting up the ceremony as we speak. So this was our source of light, the giant window revealing downtown. Now Sam here looked unbelievably good in this light. I mean, the light, the way that the natural light hits these girls is an absolute game changer. And, I, and again, so many videographers just completely drop the ball on makeup. And this is just a regular mirror and just shooting a couple of reflection shots of that mirror. And then look at this. I mean, look at look at the catch lights in the eyes. Look at the blurry background. This is on the 24 to 105, all the way in at 105. I mean, this, you cannot, you cannot find and have a better image and location than this. Plus our background, we have sort of that brownish beige look that really complements the skin tones. I mean, this isn't even color graded. And she, it's just its just crazy what natural light, with no other lights on, is going to do. Another shot that I like to do is I love it when I get the bride, again, again, alone with her dress, and you're doing your rack focusing while pulling back on the monopod. And you do that because you want to add a little bit of motion to what's going on. And so I always say, okay, look, close your eyes. And then once they open it, then I start to pull back while focusing and revealing their new last name. And I do this a lot if the dress has the name in the back. The whole point of this DSLR mirrorless interchangeable lenses is to get rack focuses, depth of field, foreground, bokeh, whatever you want to call it. And bride prep is no reason you shouldn't be doing this for every single wedding. Right here, this is a letter reading. This is in a very tiny, very tiny room at a venue down here in Florida. This room lights very well because there's only one little tiny window. This light right here is just coming from that window. And when I shoot here, a lot of photographers will fight with me because they want the tungsten lights on with the fluorescence, and I cannot accept that. And so luckily, this photographer 
can kind of really has two completely different looks. And she already knew that when I was coming in here, what was going to happen. So there was absolutely no bickering. It was, okay, Brett's here. We know what's going to happen. Let's, let's do it for him. And it's just nice to have that support. So she's just reading her letter here. And I just want to show the backlight. Now, I do have a torch light lighting her up a little bit because if I didn't have that light, she would be very, very underexposed. And again, this is now, I'm just shooting through with the reflection of a mirror that's already in that room. And we can see the backlight on her and then the torch light is off to the left of her. And then I'll grade this. This was with a either a Mark IV or a 1DC. I'm going to say 1DC. And now we're looking, we're looking really, really good here. So usually what I do, because the 1DC, remember, is an all-manual focus. Before I do this shot, I will focus in on her, on her eyelashes, and then I'll hit record right here. Going upwards, I've already got my pre-focus set on her eyelashes. And I'll throw that same color effect on that next clip to give you an idea of what it might look like. And okay, so you see the you see the flash from the photographer? Well, she actually laughed and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I didn't realize it was on. And that's why I went ahead and went down again and got a new take. So this, this bride right here, this is actually her what her prep looked like when I walked in the door. And I remember thinking, do not have a heart attack. You can fix this. We know how to fix this. And so I found a bridesmaid. I said, hey, follow me for a little bit. And we went up these steps, and there was just a tiny room, but really pretty flattering light. I got a couple different looks. Just I just tell them to look out the window, and then we got our bride. Bride to makeup artist, back to bride while rack focusing. Now, this room actually isn't the same room that we were in, but this room had pretty much the same exact setup, except it was a little bit more spacious. And then again, same bride, but now she's writing her letter. And then I moved her dress to sort of hide what was going on back here, which I think there was a table that I ended up moving, and then I was able to bring the dress in there as well. And obviously, I have a lot of different shots from this moment, but I only have this one that I selected. But that is really how I do my preps. Hopefully you guys really learn something here that as videographers, cinematographers, we have a lot of power when it comes to moving things and getting things done. And preps are great times for us to really shine. And so... Again, hopefully you kind of have a better idea of what lenses you should be using and how to use light to your advantage because most bride preps are going to look like this and we don't want to film that. We want to film this kind of material. And so always just look for the catch lights in the eyes and make sure that your composition is on point. Add some backlight if you need, because this look right here, this is how you're going to continuously book weddings. Brides, usually the most compliments I get are from my preps, and that's because I'm using my creativity, my control, to get things to look how they need to. So there it is. Hopefully you guys learned something here. And that is the bride prep portion of this course. So there it was, guys. That was the 
how to film bride prep and groom prep. I really hope you guys learned something. Most questions I ever get regarding weddings is simply about preps. Bad setups, bad light, different vendors not letting you get what you need to get and how to always just be able to bob and weave and counter those situations. We got loads more of classes coming with solo wedding filmmaking and I really hope you guys enjoyed this course and stick around because we got some goodies still to cover.